Ha! Huh. Oh, hi there. My name is Dora. Nice to meet you. Let me tell you a secret. I love art. Isn't it amazing that humans can create something beautiful? Like this vase, or this dress, or that building over there. But most of the time I love to collect paintings. Paintings are beautiful. These are some of my collections, but as you can see my favorite paintings are oil paintings. Oil painting has a unique ability to capture light, color, and mood. Let me teach you how to paint with oil paint. I am no teacher, but I will try my best. Welcome to my studio. What you need to begin an oil painting is oil paint. It's quite expensive than other types of paint, but for the sake of art and creativity, I use Windsor and Newton oil paint. You will need a thick surface like this traditional canvas, or you can buy panel canvas or use canvas pad. Next, brushes. These are my favorite. Synthetic brush gives you clean strokes unlike bristle brush. Medium. You need a medium to paint. Just like watercolor or acrylic paint, you need water to activate the flow of your paint, while oil paint, you need oil. There are many kinds of oil, but my favorite is linseed oil. You cannot clean your brush using water. I recommend using a thinner. It will break the oil paint so it'll fall off and you will have a clean brush. Don't worry about dipping your dirty brush into the thinner. You can always reuse the thinner again, as the paint particle will fall down to the bottom of the bottle. Palette You need a palette to mix and match colors. I use a flat palette. It is more comfortable than this kind of palette. To transfer the portrait to the canvas, we will start sketching. I like to use colored pencils. Make sure not to use black because it will show up later through the oil paint. I will be using this fun picture from at Seb Cha for my reference. Rather than focusing too much on 3D structure anatomy of human head, try to focus on shadow and light to make flat 2D shapes feel alive. Now I am sketching the overall shape of the head by sketching straight lines and trying to resemble the shape of the head and the hair. After that I like to mark where the eyes, the nose, and the mouth will be. Now to make the portrait pop try to notice where the light and shadows pattern in the face. In this portrait we can see the shadow edge on the side of the cheek and the edge of the forehead. While marking where the eyebrows and eyes will be, we also notice the shadow on the edge of the nose connecting with the shadows on the cheeks, making a triangle shaped of light. This process is important because you don't want to end up having an asymmetrical face, a crooked nose, and too big or too small eyes. Now I am going to add a value to indicate the light shape. By this point, we can already see the portrait. In the end, it looks like this. First, I like to do underpainting. I do this for all my other paintings. Because the canvas is white, it will be hard to see the tonal values and lighting of your painting. By layering a darker color underneath, you could see the color you paint on the canvas better. The paint should be sufficiently translucent to allow the underdrawing or sketch you made earlier show through and to provide you guidance to the final painting. You can make any skin color in the world using a simple palette. 
With this palette, we can understand blue and brown will darker the color, while white and yellow will lighten the color. Take a little bit of everything to make the base skin color, lighten or darken the skin color using white or yellow, or brown or blue. By adding blue it will gives you a cooler tone like shadows, while yellow gives warmer tones acts like lighting. Start painting with the darkest color which is usually the shadow. Shadow is very important, it creates a sense of shape and depth. With the right form of shadow, your painting will look natural, while improper shadows might make your portrait unstructured and weird. After that, I like to continue painting the eyes. Not in detail, but starting with the darkest color of the eyes. Always remember you have a load of choices when it comes to brush size. You could always change your brush to a smaller size to draw small parts like the eyes. Eyes are important when you are drawing or painting a figure. Because when other people see your painting, they will automatically see the eyes of your portrait first. Same as when you meet someone or talking with your loved ones, you will make eye contact. But it will be strange if you have unnatural looking eyes in your painting. Yeah. Absolutely have to have dark in order to have light. Gotta have dark. Gotta have opposites. Dark and light. Light and dark. Continually in painting. If you have light on light, you have nothing. If you have dark on dark, you basically have nothing. From the reference photo, we can see there is a slight red on the side cheeks, forehead, and the chin. As humans, we all have a certain amount of red, green, and blue in our skin. This unique color combination is how we determine skin tones. By adding a little blush of red, it will give your portrait a livelier result. But I have a question. Why do humans create art? To be honest, I don't understand most of the paintings I see. People only recognize the painting Mona Lisa or maybe the artist Van Gogh. Artists waste their time and money to create something that doesn't have meaning for anyone. It is just like there's an urge in humans to create something. I guess it makes them happy. Having no limitation in the blank canvas, just you alone, with your little imaginations. Rather than drawing the hair in detail, try to separate it into groups of shapes, and then slowly build the hair with more detail, like the lighting. Thank you for staying, so it's time to come clean. Actually, I have another secret. I am a robot. I used other artists' work to create a database for my own work. It's called AI Art. Hey, it's cheating. It's not original. I need to spend $500 on a tutor to be able to draw this. That's not art. You stole my job. Actually, hey, I could not replace human creativity. Out there, there will be someone who still prefers traditional art. There will be someone who still prefers to see a lump of paint on a canvas. Even though AI art is easy, someone out there will still prefer artwork with background story and hard work. AI art is not a scam, it just helps humans with creative blocks. Or a company with an empty wallet, that could not hire a real artist. It's not a threat, but a tool for us humans to expand our creativity. So it is understandable to feel threatened. But it also pushes us to learn, practice, and create beautiful things. <laughs>